Excuse me, are you Michael Jordan? Uh, are you Michael Jordan? Come on, Tim. Huh? Huh? Come on, Tim. Ramon Ariano Felix, the monster of Tijuana, made an ad to the David Letterman show. The narcos all kind of come and go in a blur of names. Uh, but uh, one of the more famous family names you might remember hearing about, the Ariano Felix C word out of Tijuana. Now, Tijuana right now is the murder capital of the world. 134 murders to 100,000 people, which is about double what the highest cities in America ever obtained. No, last year, uh, Jackson, Mississippi got up to about 100 per 100,000 because there's eight homicide detectives and yeah, Jackson, Mississippi had the highest murder rate in the country last year. But anyways, down in Tijuana, the Ariano Felix brothers uh, really corrupted the elite youth of the city of Tijuana. Now, Tijuana is a city founded in vice. It was built really for the purpose of servicing Americans when prohibition started. So Tijuana only came into existence uh, in the night, uh, I don't know, in the early 1920s for Americans to go and drink liquor. As late as 1950, it only had 65,000 people. It's up to about 2 million now. Uh, at some point in the early 80s, late 70s, maybe around 1980, the Ariano Felix brothers kind of show up in town and they weren't really anybody of note. They'd come from Sinaloa. And, uh, you know, it's when we think of the Mexican narco culture, it's Really the culture of the Sinaloa Cowboys. I mean, almost everybody we know of is from that same area. But anyways, the Ariano Felix brothers show up. They were young guys, cool. Some of them had some of five brothers. And um, there's all these articles about how the children of Tijuana's legal elite, like the people that uh, owned the businesses, the people that were going to the Tijuana Country Club, uh, got uh, uh, sucked into the vortex of their criminal empire starting in the late, mid to late 80s. Uh, and by the early 2000s, 25, at least 25 or so kids of like Tijuana's most elite families had died as a result of being part of the Ariana Felix cartel, not to mention others who went to prison. Now, um, there's only two brothers, I think, still left alive. Uh, Javier, who was captured off the coast of Cabo in about 07. He's probably getting ready to get out. And then Benjamin, who was like the brains of it, or so-called the financial head, and he just filed a thing asking to get let out early. I would imagine he may have given information. But the most infamous brother, was Ramon, the head of security, very brutal guy. He's the one who, um, if you remember the movie Traffic, and there was that hitman Frankie Flowers, who uh, they captured by going to a bar for men who like other men, but he was a rich kid. And it was based on some of these rich kids in Tijuana that were like, just whatever kind of way, and just got brought into this cartel lifestyle, and Ramon, was the head of the assassins, and uh, Ramon was killed in a shootout with the Mexican Marines in like 02. But this funny, well, added story at the center of my story today uh, concerns the following his appearance on David Letterman. So in about in 92, 93, there was the Archbishop of Guadalajara, who was a Roman Catholic cardinal. There's only 128 cardinals in the world. These are the people that when, you, when there's a time for a new pope, the cardinals convene and they elect the new pope. So uh, the Archbishop of Guadalajara, a big, you know, growing uh, archdiocese in Mexico, one of the probably, you know, 50 most important Catholic religious figures in the world. He was killed at the Guadalajara airport by, well, the people convicted of it are 
members of Barrio Logan Heights, one of the groups of gangs out of San Diego and the Logan Heights area. And uh, David Barone, maybe he was the ringleader. I think he was killed in the shootout, but there's a couple guys in prison for it now. He was killed at the Guadalajara airport, supposedly because he was riding in a crown, white prow of uh, Grand Marquise, which all the drug dealers favored. And supposedly they were uh, attempting to kill El Chapo, who was supposed to be coming to the airport, but they shot the wrong Grand Marquis, and they got uh, the arch, the, the cardinal, the Archbishop of Guadalajara. But of course, he was wearing, you know, a giant cross around his neck and uh, whatever a cardinal had, and he was shot from two feet away. So hard to believe they didn't know who it was. But these San Diego gang members were. They were some of this hit squad, so they had the elite kids from the Tijuana side and then from the San Diego side, they were getting hardened U.S. gang members. Kind of a reversal of what you might think. Uh, you know, there's rough people in the United States, like streets of the, the U.S. are... are so well, those people are taught to people down in Mexico how to be so violent, because like I said, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, Tijuana was fairly, was quite safe. Um, now, of course, because law enforcement down there is so corrupt, the violence that we taught them, or, you know, was maybe imported over there, because our guns definitely are the ones doing the violence, um, has got totally out of control. But anyways, so this uh, uh, colonel gets killed, and it's linked to San Diego gang members who are working for the Ariana Felix cartel, and Ramon, Ramon goes on the uh, U.S. FBI's top 10 most wanted list. And so they didn't know where he was at. And in 1995, I forget who it was, but it was an FBI agent, you know, at home. And, you know, at night he's falling asleep when he's got the David Letterman show on. And they're doing a prank where they're out on Hollywood Boulevard. They're in front of Man's Chinese Theater, which is a big tourist attraction in L.A. And the cameraman is just kind of walking around. And there's this real goofy, kind of odd-looking, tall and obese, like, Mexican tourist with a Michael Jordan jersey on and a big hat and some dad shorts. And he just looks bizarre. Everybody, it's Michael Jordan. Look, everybody, it's Michael Jordan. Look. Excuse me. Excuse me. Are you Michael Jordan? Uh, are you Michael Jordan? Dim me. Huh? Huh? Thank him. Oh, he's too Spanish. Well, it's Benjamin, I mean, Ramon Ariano Felix. He was hiding out in L.A. And the David Letterman show just happened to catch this guy on camera and uh, broadcasted so the FBI uh, knew where he was, but it was still another, it might have been 96, 95, it was still another like six years before he was killed, and he was killed in Mexico by the Mexican Marines, so I don't, they had got them on his trail in the U.S. and probably caused them to flee the U.S., but, you know, who knows what would have happened. Uh, like I said, his brother's trying to get out of prison early now, but yeah, the Ariano Felix brothers, um, who's a legacy in Tijuana of these elite families, a whole lot of them saw their kids corrupted by the easy money of the new burgeoning cocaine business. I mean, Tijuana was the number one port of entry through the 90s. During the 90s, Ariano Felix, a one-third of the yayo going into country, into this country, was coming through Tijuana, and he was known for riding around uh, in a mink coat and a red Porsche with his pistol. Um, one of the Mexican side witnesses who helped, uh, or who gave a lot of information against the Ariano Felix cartel, couldn't figure out exactly who this person was, man or a woman, but they had a lot of private information about him um, going into rages because of his combined use of steroids and cocaine. And one, one day this uh, witness talked about being at their compound off Rosario Beach and swimming and looking up and realizing Ramon Ariano had, uh, had him or her 
and the scope sights of their of his m16 just for something to do and i obviously didn't pull the trigger but uh it seems like a a, a a psychopath a crazy person but that's that's uh you know kind of the fear as i'm looking in the united states if the human beings behavior has to be controlled to some extent and uh, I talk about it, I, you know, and these stories are doing L.A. about the drug use, and we see it all through society. At least when, uh, you know, it was bad to be a dope fiend. I mean, people hid their addictions, and it wasn't cool. They kept some people from doing it, and keeping it more expensive keeps a lot of people's habit from getting too bad. But if, if we're not going to have police enforcement and drugs are cheaper and more prevalent, we could start looking more like Mexico, in which our case our criminals, our gangsters, could start becoming more like seemingly, you know, bloodthirsty, crazy, violent anarchos down there, and just the drug trade empowers them so much and there's no checks to their power. You end up people with people like the Felix Brothers or the Ariana Phillips Brothers or the Beltran Levas. Excuse me, are you Michael Jordan? Uh, are you Michael Jordan? I'm not them. Us? Huh? I'm not them. To Ramon Ariano Felix, the monster of Tijuana, made an ad to the David Letterman show, dressed in some goofy tourist clothes, like I always tell you in a lot of these stories. You never know who you're dealing with. Better be careful. When our nephews or grandkids might be in town from south of the border and we play for keeps. Al Profit, Tijuana Dope. Mm -hmm.